Hi, I'm Chris Moore with HVAC Pro Blog, and welcome back for part two of what you need to know about air filters. This week, we're gonna wrap up with particulate removal and holding, design considerations, and resolving existing issues with those air filters. Without further ado, here's the training. Now let's talk about particulate holding capacity or the ability to hold dust when it comes to filters. This is really important when you're selecting a filter because it impacts the time between filter changes. I can put a really high efficient filter into a one inch filter slot that's gonna cause a high pressure drop, but it might need to be replaced monthly if I do that. And is that realistic for that homeowner and that application? What ends up happening is there's tends to be no indication on when these filters should be replaced. They typically become a restriction and cause short cycling a heat exchanger, maybe cracking a heat exchanger, freezing A coils. There's a lot of secondary problems that happen when people take, let's say a MERV 1 standard fiberglass filter out of that system and slide in a very high efficient MERV 8 one inch filter. That restriction actually causes that air to really pack in all the particulates. And what ends up happening is, is it'll either start to go right through the filter or around the filter. So what a lot of contractors have done has installed maybe small whistles across a filter to whistle when the filter gets dirty and needs to be replaced. It's measuring pressure drop. I've also seen YouTube manometers, but there's even electronic ways of sending notifications to homeowners phones now using some applications and devices. But basically, if you want to increase the time between filter changes, what you want to do is increase the surface area and have a deeper pleat if you want to still maintain removing those particulates. Now, a couple of design considerations you need to make sure you address is the filter needs to be held firmly in place. This is actually a code requirement. Also, it needs to be easy to replace. That's where we talk about accessible, right? Make sure that the pressure drop is reasonable and we're designing around it and we know what the total external static pressure impact is when you replace a filter or you design around that filter. Also in the code is something called complete coverage of the blower or return air for that furnace. And it, there's a great picture I took and I've used in other blogs and trainings of something that doesn't meet the code. So the code actually reads, ducts shall be constructed to allow an even distribution of air over the entire filter. I've also seen the filter box be too large and they plate off the back side of the extra excess portion of that filter. And that's where this code should actually be impacted and it should not pass that for that permit. Now there are a few problems we see when it comes to addressing existing installation problems. One thing I would say is keep an eye on pleated filters and surface area. It's really easy to design a one inch pleated filter that's MERV 7 or less to handle the volume of air and the velocity that you want. If you have the, a really high efficient filter in a return grill like in this picture, you probably want to try to increase the pleat depth with a two inch style or a three inch style that actually slides up into that return box. There are a few manufacturers that make these and they'll probably quiet down that system and increase the time before that filter has to be replaced. Also, as you increase efficiency, you typically increase pressure drop. So if you end up having a high static situation, sometimes you can actually remove that high efficient filter that has a higher pressure drop put in something more reasonable that still removes some allergens and stuff for the residential application and address cleaning the air, not filtering the air, with another device. There are plenty out there. One I have seen most of the time used is ultraviolet germicidal irradiation or UV lights, right? This is not for filtration, this is actually to clean the air. And if you start to see a lot of slime or mold or mildew building up or coils or pans inside the ductwork, this is how you would treat that. What you need to consider is how long the bulb life is because as you use it more and more, they become less effective and they need to be replaced. Also, the location you're gonna put that UV light is significant. Obviously, it needs to be hitting that area, but you wanna avoid wiring any duct liners and actually having that air hit a media filter. It will significantly degrade these items and it will impact the efficiency of the system as well as 
duct leakage and other pieces, right? So really important, make sure that that UV light does not impact wiring, duct liners, and media filters. All right, so what did you think? Did you like the training on what you need to know about air filters? If you did and you wanna get these things one year in advance, head over to my Patreon page where you can join for as little as $8 a month and have access to more than two years worth of written blogs that haven't been released and one year worth of webinars that were recorded for my Patreon members. Thanks again for joining me this week at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.